ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. It is so good to see everybody back here on the live chat. Hopefully you guys are doing absolutely fantastic today. We are conducting an emergency live stream today due to the scuttlebutt going on and of course to the absolute chaos happening in the cryptocurrency markets today. Of course, you all know exactly what I'm talking about. FTX has been declared insolvent, has paused or halted probably forever user withdrawals, making multi-millionaire cryptocurrency traders and even hundred thousand heirs like yourself or single thousand heirs for my peeps out in the crowd. I see you over there. Uh, insolvent overnight and the contagion has spread. So this all began obviously with the collapse of Terra Luna and then continued on with Three Arrows Capital. And now we are seeing the absolute continued devastation of the cryptocurrency markets with the implosion of FTX. So I wanted to do this live stream, go over all the evidence, and then of course, review the charts, see what impact this might have on price for us as traders moving forward, and then discuss rational things that we can do for this in a clear path moving forward. Because if there's one thing I've learned through three such cycles now that I've experienced in the cryptocurrency markets, and we are still here, the community is still here. We are still utilizing the pathways to profit methodology, still trading exactly the same way that we've been trading. And there is a reason for that. When you, if you understand what's going on, however, when you understand what's going on and you can either ignore that or avoid it with data and statistics and a tested strategy, life gets so much better. So let's not waste any time. Your time is valuable. So is mine. Let's get right into this. So I wanted to kind of go through some of the best threads on Twitter right now. And this is the juicy one right now. So stay tuned to the end of the live stream for this. This is the kind of the juiciest one because as we progress through this evidence, uh, we're gonna see that Sam Bankman Freed and FTX, which had kind of really posed themselves as the the responsible, you know, cryptocurrency company, as the responsible and the trusted centralized exchange. Uh, if you guys will recall, many times throughout this year and last year, Sam Bankman Freed appeared in front of Congress to testify. He, or not Congress, but well, Congress, yes, but uh, the Special Committee on Cryptocurrencies uh, to testify. Um, he put the climate change thing on, on top of theirs. And so th anyways, my whole point is that, you know, FTX had made a lot of attempts to brand itself as uh, you know the responsible and conscientious cryptocurrency exchange that you could trust with your deposits. But you know, it's so it's so funny, like like history doesn't rhyme or does, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes over and over and over again. How many centralized cryptocurrency exchanges have we seen implode? And more specifically, centralized cryptocurrency exchanges that all engage in the same type of high risk behavior when they take user deposits and then they do things with them. OK, when they take user deposits, then they do things with them. So uh, let's start. Oh, and then obviously they just bought the, the basketball arena not too long ago. Um, so yeah, it just kind of keeps spiraling and keeps spiraling. Um, so here we go. Uh, let's start off with, with flood saying there is zero question that FTX was complicit in outright fraud and should be treated not as people that made a mistake, but criminals that absconded with user funds. And again, as we progress through this, you'll see that there's a lot of evidence. There's about a $6 billion, uh, hole that seemed to be left in the books. And the latest update is from Coindesk, which is reporting that CZ now has apparently kind of stepped back from the negotiating table. So for those of you who are completely in the dark, uh, FTX reached out to Binance, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, and essentially said that we're insolvent and I'd like you to purchase us. I'm sure that wasn't the whole gist of the conversation, but that's essentially what, what it boiled down to. Uh, and CZ said that, okay, let's go to the table. And so the negotiations, and we'll see this, bind, uh, CZ actually has his own tweet here in a little bit. Uh, saying, and let's see if we can get to this right now. Okay, here we go. So this will be a good introduction to what we're talking about here. But note that, that this was just, an, this was less than an hour ago where Flood said deposits on FTX are still open. So you're not able to withdraw your money. You're not able to withdraw your money, but they'll still take it. They will still gladly take your money. So obviously, if you're watching this, do not deposit any money in FTX. Uh, do not deposit any money into the Hornets Nest. So, okay. Uh, here we have a tweet directly from, and shout outs to the chat, by the way, uh, GB Wally, thank you so much for coming, my friend, Kimo Zabi, that funky piano, Caprica, B-Flow, Tom Hardy, Jibbles, Brian B in the chat, good to see you guys, hopefully you guys are doing well, hopefully you guys' this portfolios are growing and not devastated by today's catastrophe, yesterday's catastrophe, really. Uh, so here we go, CZ saying, in the spirit of transparency, we might as well share the actual note that he sent out to the entire uh, Binance team globally a few hours ago. So this is very interesting, right? So we're going to go through this. 
Uh, so given the events that transpired over the last couple of days, I want to reiterate a few points. What is the events that transpired over the last couple of days? FTX freezing withdrawals and declaring that they're basically insolvent. One, we did not master plan this or anything related to it. Okay, so remember, there is, or not remember, but here, remember if you know, and here's the information if you don't, the conspiracy theory going around, uh, because um, the conspiracy theory going around is that CZ kind of created the rumor several months ago that FTX was insolvent. Remember, when Luna collapsed and the contagion began spreading out throughout the cryptocurrency economy, uh, we saw Three Arrows Capital collapse, and then obviously Celsius, and now BlockFi is under heat. So all of these centralized institutions that basically became DeFi with a public face, right? Remember, DeFi is all about however you want to slice it down, however you want to, however you want to say it does this or this or this tech with this AMM or wh whatever. DeFi at its fundamental core relies on the concept of, hey, we're a protocol. If you give us your crypto, some way, some shape, some form. But remember. The only thing you can do with cryptocurrency, the only thing you can do is send and receive. That's all you can do. That's the only function you can take. In smart contracts, just do complicated sending and receiving. So at the fundamental core of cryptocurrency transactions, the only way value moves across chain or transfers funds from one wallet to another, all you can do is send or receive. That's it. That's all any protocol will ever do. It will send money somewhere, it will send money that it has or receive money from someone else and send it somewhere else. That's all you can do on cryptocurrency. Now, obviously, there are, if you look at smart contracts and protocols, they have algorithms that are very complicated on exactly what, how much they send out and how much they will be allowed to receive and when they will pay out. But at the end of the day, that's all crypto does. It's sending and receiving. Well, everything else is bells and whistles, sending and receiving. This is why the massive pain point, the massive area of attack, the massive area where you can lose cryptocurrency, the massive area or the most important area where you need to make sure that all your I's are dotted and T's are crossed is when you're doing any kind of transaction, when you're sending, when you're receiving, okay? Trading on centralized exchanges is a little different. Obviously, you want to make sure all your I's are dotted and T's are crossed there. But it's an irrevocable mistake on the blockchain if you put an extra zero in or if you put the decimal in the wrong place because at the end of the day, all you can do is send and receive. Sorry, just putting my phone on vibrate. All right, so uh, so the conspiracy theory here is that Binance, or CZ himself personally, kind of began putting out this narrative several months ago when all of the other large, uh, you know, DeFi, or sorry, sorry. So I need to continue that point so this makes sense. So DeFi is sending and receiving with bells and whistles, all right? It is based on the concept of, hey, if you deposit your funds, if you send us your funds and you put them here in this place, we will allow you to receive more when you want to take back more, we'll pay, i.e. paying yield. Okay, that's the fundamental concept of DeFi. Celsius, BlockFi, uh, all of these, Voyager, these are all companies that took the concept of DeFi, which is an old banking concept, and they put a public face on it and they got really big and large. That's that's it. You know, what, you know so, so don't... A lot of people make these things extremely complicated and they're really not. They are they are extremely complicated. Um, so, okay, cool. Uh, Binance just five minutes ago tweeted this out. I'll get to that because the story and the narrative is too good. So we'll conclude with that, all right? This will be a good story. All right, um, so here's what he's saying. Uh, he wanted to read a few points. One, we did not master plan this. It was less than 24 hours ago that SBF, that Sam Bankman Freed, if you guys don't know, called me and before that I had very little knowledge of the internal state of things at FTX. So here he's saying that, okay, listen, you guys think that I'm doing this big master plan, but in reality, I wasn't, I'm not the bad guy, I'm not the joker. Yeah, can we believe that? I don't know. So I could do some mental calculations for revenues to guess theirs, but that would never be very accurate. I was surprised when he wanted to talk. Uh, maybe if I get the draw tool on, this would be a little better. Uh, I was surprised when he wanted to talk. My first reaction was he wants to do an OTC deal. That's an over-the-counter deal. This is a, like a private deal between large money traders for, uh, you know, so they don't have to go through the exchange. Uh, but here we are. So he's telling everyone in this paragraph that because the deal is ongoing, this, remember, he's talking to Binance employees right now, right? So because the deal to potentially purchase FTX was ongoing, he wanted anybody, and this is going out to his traders, this is going out to anybody that's working for Binance, do not sell your FTT tokens. Don't buy and don't sell. Uh, yes, we have a bag, but that's okay. More importantly, we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard than even in banks. And I like this. You know, listen, I really like CZ. There's not too much negative you can say about him. Uh, and he closes up with this last comment in the end that really makes me like him too. And I'm not here to 
you know, I'm not here to, to pump Binance or pump CZ, all right? If you guys look down, uh, anyways. Uh, three, obviously, do not comment on the deal publicly or internally. If you are directly involved, don't ask. We have a good team handling it. Things will play out. And this is very important, right? And this is going to be the crux of my argument when we get into the market analysis, right? Because the problem with technical analysis, and I see this a lot from... You know whether it's you know whether it's technical analysis larpers on Twitter or whether it's people posting the trading view chat or, or or people in discords around the internet. Um, people seem to think that technical analysis is some form of magic, right? Now I don't want to badmouth technical analysis. What I want to badmouth is uh, an interpret a, po a very popular interpretation of technical analysis, right? Technical analysis is a tool. It can be used very successfully to have good success in cryptocurrency trading or any type of trading. Uh, in fact, since cryptocurrency is so liquid and accessible, it's probably the place where it's uh, where it's best applied. And since there aren't very many, I want you guys to understand why does technical analysis tend to work so well in cryptocurrency? Well, if you go talk to, um, you know, trading desks at very large firms and funds, like if you go talk to the trading desk at JP Morgan Chase, or if you go talk to the trading desk at Wells Fargo, whatever, right? Uh, they do not rely on technical analysis very much. They're very, very, very much fundamentals, very much volatility, very much volume, very much market flow. They've got algos. They've got all this stuff, right? Um, and why? Because a technical analysis is a less advanced tool than what these institutions have built. And since these institutions are so entrenched in the Forex markets and the equity markets, uh, a regular individual coming in, just wading in, doing some technical analysis with horizontal support and resistance is not likely to be very successful in those markets. Now, compare that with cryptocurrency, which is a trillion, which, which is a, well, was a trillion, but this, this massive market capitalization, this massive, you know, flowing, constantly changing dynamic pool of assets and money from all over the world, connected globally, instantaneous. And we just don't have the same institutions. We don't have the same regulation. The, you know, you would be absolutely shocked to learn how not complicated most of the largest market maker strategies are, right? Most of them are using algos. Most of them are using simple strategies. Many of the large money traders only became large money traders because they happened to become very, because they happened to invest early in Bitcoin, Ethereum, or some of these other projects and play the casino very successfully. So they're not, even though it may seem like it, they're not very, what sort I'm looking for? They're not very complicated traders, nuanced traders. They're not very professional. They're really not, right? Now, there is a lot of professionalism that you can find in the market, and CZ's letter here is a, is a shining example of that. But there's not a lot of, of, there's really not as many like professional or highly nuanced or complicated, you know, convoluted trading strategies out there as you might think, right? Um, and that's why the and that's why technical analysis tends to work very well in the markets because the the large money traders the market makers are using technical analysis too. So your tools are tend are technical analysis is, is a tool belt that right now in its current instantiation works very well in cryptocurrency for that very reason. It's because the large money is using similar strategies to what you're doing. All right. So. Um, but the larger problem here is that, you know, I see all these price action bros and all these, all, all these other people, uh, you know, talking about buy the dip, do this, do that. You know, you guys have been with me for years. You guys know that we trade the charts. All right. And we are trend following traders primarily. All right. Obviously, we have worked a lot in the last few years to develop strategies for reversal, strategies for mean reversion. Uh, but at its core, what has made us the most money? What is the most profitable trading strategy out there? It's trend following trading. It requires patience. It requires a little bit of actually it requires quite a bit of discipline. Uh, but it is the easiest system to build. It is a strategy that you can build with the pathways to profit methodology in less than a month and get it up and running and push it out to the markets and begin trading and making money right away. And it just works. So what he says here is FTX going down is not good for anyone in the industry. Do not view it as a win for us. User confidence is severely shaken. Regulators, regulators will scrutinize exchanges even more. Licenses around the globe will be harder to get. And we're going to be the biggest and people are going to attack us. But that's okay. We're good. You know, and then the rest of that paragraph is just, we can take, we can take this. We're used to being the largest. We're used to being preyed upon. We're used to people trying to attack us. Okay. All good. Fine. Uh, so here's the thing. While it is possible, while it is possible that this, 
right? So let's just look at a chart of Bitcoin here to kind of highlight this point. Okay, while it is possible that this is the bottom, I don't want to say that it is not, okay? What we really need to consider is the knockdown effects and the long-term strength to the trend that this action that just occurred, FTX going insolvent, and millions of dollars being locked up and potentially vaporized, right? User deposits are not available. I'm not trying to spread FUD, but if FTX really is insolvent, okay, then there is a legal order of who gets paid back first, all right? So we're going to see how that all unfolds over the coming months. But um, yeah, there's a possibility that depositors only get $250,000 back or up to $250,000. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a real nightmare. And that's, and that's if that's, if the money's there and that's, if people can make claims and that this people have a registered user account and, that, and, and that's, and then months and years for the legal proceedings to play out. Have you guys ever studied the class action lawsuit in depth? If you haven't just go read a couple of John Grisham books, they'll explain it for you. Uh, but class action lawsuits are long. They are not beneficial typically to the to the to the ultimate beneficiary. The lawyers take a, a large portion of it, and ultimately there is a massive settlement that doesn't get. Now the, the the Mount Gox settlement was a shining example of how a settlement could be good. But even look there, you know, investors took a massive haircut on their assets, and they did that because well they're like well yeah that was back in 2013 when Bitcoin was less than a thousand. Hell yeah, we're going to take a haircut because it's worth so much more now. But what if in the situation where, you know, 12 months or a year from now, crypto is maybe right where it's at, only a little bit higher, maybe even lower? Who knows? It's just a bad situation for individuals with deposits on FTX. Um, okay, now here we go. All right, so uh, speaking of prices, as I have said many times over the years, ignore the prices. Obviously, as traders, we can't do that. So this is not very helpful to us, CZ. Of course, he's not speaking to us. Uh, but let's keep our heads down and focus on building products people use. It has always worked over the years, and today is obviously no exception. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, that right there is why Binance is the largest cryptocurrency exchange on the planet. All right. Uh, CZ is a good leader. He is continually focused on not gambling with user deposits and just building to the best of his ability a risk-free casino that millions of people around the world want to use and then taking a small teeny little cut off each trade that is the way you want to be the shoveler or do you want to sell the shovels right he doesn't want to be out there in the dirt dirt dicky mud now not to not to not to bag on what we do all right there's a lot of money to be being out there shoveling in the dirt you're going to find gold every once in a while but all right so uh, this was CZ's uh, official announcement that he that he put out to uh, all Binance employees. And then he po posted this publicly on uh, uh, Twitter because in the spirit of transparency, might as well share the actual note. Yeah, might, might as well, because it's going to get leaked and circulated eventually, right? Uh, uh, shout outs to people joining now. We've got Cavano Trades, Bitcoin Trading, Freeman's Cryptoverse. See you guys. I see you guys. Uh, yeah, scam bankman fraud. That's the, that's what's kind of going around on Twitter right now. Scam bankman fraud. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, this was the letter from uh, from Binance. So let's go ahead and put these over here as we continue to weave this tail. All right. Uh, nope. Sorry, that's just my Twitter feed. Okay. All right. Here we here we go. So so this is kind of the the scuttlebutt, the conspiracy theory that. CZ uh, generated these rumors. So this uh, this this tweet goes, um, the way that Binance's CZ started the rumor about FTX, which caused the liquidity collapse, and then acquiring FTX is straight out of the playbook of Rockefeller and Vanderbilt. So um, here we go. Yeah, this this is good. I could summarize it, but this gentleman does, does quite a good job. Uh, so it started when CZ announced that Binance was selling the FTT tokens after disturbing information had come to light about FTX's balance sheet. Okay? So... Let's contrast that, right? Let's contrast this statement right here with what CZ says right here. He's like, one, we did not master plan this. I, it was, I, he just called me yesterday. I didn't know what the internal state of FTX was. I mean, I could do some stuff in my head, but I wouldn't know. Uh, let's see, can, like, I'm not sure if we can pull up this actual tweet, but I'll try to dig for it. See if any of you guys can actually find it, uh, or CZ, if you can find CZ's tweet itself, 
uh, where they announced that they were going to sell the FTT token. Here, I'll do a quick, I'll do a quick Twitter search for this here real quick. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. November 6th. All right. So this was three days ago. Liquidating our FTT is just post exit. Let's see here. So let's go. If it was November 6th, then let's just see. Let's see here. Oof. He's kind of rubbing it in right here. Here he's saying two big lessons. Never use the token you created as collateral. And you guys will see this as we continue. So FTT is FTX's token. And instead of just using it for what was intended, they did it. They did what every single token issuer eventually tends to do, unfortunately. And they start treating that token like a piggy bank if they're very successful. And then they over leverage themselves on that token. And when that token collapses in value, they get blown out of the water. It's happened over and over and over again with so many DeFi protocols and with so many crypto companies. Celsius is a prime example. Don't borrow if you run a crypto business. Don't use capital efficiently. Have a large reserve. And, and this is exactly right, right? This is exactly right. If you're going to be a cryptocurrency company, if you're going to be a cryptocurrency trader, you have to be prepared for 80 to 90 percent drawdowns. OK, you have to be prepared for 80 to 90 percent drawdowns. So as a trader, this is why we recommend utilizing, you know, liquid stable coins very frequently. This is why we recommend hedging. This is why we recommend or actually insist, require that our students use our risk management system or a good risk management system where they are calculating their risk per trade and with their portfolio so that they understand their total downside risk. And so they're never liquidated and they stay safe all the time. All right, uh, let's see here. Liquidity crunch, ask for our help, SBF, keep building. All right, this dude, this dude just, this dude, all this does, all this dude does is tweet. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Saying that he can't orchestrate it. Let's be clear. Sorry, guys. I know this is probably, here we go. Here we go. Uh, as part of Binance's exit from FTX equity last year, we received $2.1 billion equivalently in cash, BUSD, and FTT. Due to recent revelations that have come to light, we have decided to liquidate any remaining FTT on our books. Here we go. Uh, we will try to do so in a way that minimizes market impact. Good luck. Uh, let's go see what, how, how did they minimize market impact? Let's go see. We would like to do this in a way that minimizes market impact. Uh, <laughs> FTT has lost 92% of its value within the last week. So I, I want to put that into perspective. So FTT, then this is just, this is just Bybit. Bybit has a really good, uh, sometimes uh, a lot of exchanges do uh, track record of listing things at the top. But FTT was already down 65% and then it lost another 95%. So uh, we were having, so I don't know if you guys know this, but every week um, uh, the analysts at Kraken Cryptocurrency meet uh, to share alpha, discuss what we have upcoming, hold ourselves accountable and just be with the community of real money traders. And um, uh, uh, <laughs> we were having a nice discussion and, and, and somebody had said, you know, um, well, you know, I don't think the market can go any lower potentially, right? And then, and then um, another analyst had said, well, look, man, this is crypto. So there's no such thing as can't go any lower. And this is a prime example of this. When you see something that's down 65%, fall another 92%. This thing is probably going to zero. We don't know. Obviously it could come back. Look at Luna, right? I mean, you know, just, just I'm not out here doomsaying. Let's look at Luna, right? Uh, L-U-N-C, I believe. Uh, or it's 1,000, sorry, 1,000 L-U-N-C. There we go. This is the original. Uh, shoot. Um, uh, what if we open this up and we just look for L-U-N-C. Here we go. Let's just go look at the market capitalization. Yeah, so we can see that uh, even 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 Luna, right? Massive run up, collapse, and then pretty significant bounce back in market capitalization. Like what did it? What is that? From the low wick to the high, 
yeah, I mean, did, did a 2x, right? Did a 2x, increased 93% in value. Not bad. All right, I'm going to seem really, uh, there we go. Larry, that's better. Okay, so increase significantly in value. Uh, and then obviously, it, you know, shuffle back down to oblivion because LUNC is absolutely worthless and never will be worth anything. So, okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, how can you listen? How, here's the, here's the thing, right? CZ Binance, right? This dude's posting this publicly on Twitter, right? Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but when you are a massive company and you're holding a large portion in equity of another company's stock, you don't go to Twitter and tell everybody that you're selling it because you're concerned about your holdings, right? You know what I'm saying? You're, you're not even allowed to do that, right? So so this is, I, I think this is disingenuous on CZ's part. I do like C, I, I'm not trying to, uh, again, like I have a very, very firm rule on this. If somebody does something good, I will congratulate them. If somebody does something wrong, I will, what's the word I'm looking for? Tisk tisk, you know what I mean? Like I'll, I call a spade a spade. So, um. So yeah, so this is, this, I think this is a little disingenuous when later on he's like, I, I couldn't have even orchestrated this. I couldn't have thought of this. The, you're, dude, you're CZ, man. You're, 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 you're giga brain. All right, you're giga brain. All right, so, so it started when CZ announced that Binance was selling the FTT tokens after disturbing information to come to light about the balance sheet. Uh, panicked, every FTX customer started demanding withdrawals at the same time. This was a run on the bank at FTX. And also, um, interesting to note, uh, we're probably going to see some bank runs, and that's why that's why the bottom likely isn't in. Okay, we. I mean, well, actually, there's a weird way that it actually could be, but we'll talk about that in a second. So, with this massive scare, we're 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 seeing we can look at inflows and outflows, and 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 outflows from exchanges are absolutely off the charts. The Bitcoin balance on exchanges has almost never been lower than it is right now, and. It takes time for fear and panic to spread, right? It's not over. The fear and panic just started. It's going to have a knockdown effect because what's going to happen is FTX just imploded. Well, and, and why did FTX implode? Because it used FTT and it used its reserves to bail out BlockFi, to bail out Voyager, all right? And it did that. It was smart politically so that FTX seemed solvent, right? They're like, hey, look at us. Look at all these other companies that are going under. We're going to bail them out, right? That lets you trust us that we're solvent and there's nothing wrong and everything's good. But it was political because they did have a gaping hole in their balance sheet that is now being exposed. So now FTX has imploded. So let's rewind the tape. Why did Three Arrows Capital, why did Celsius, why did Voyager implode? Because they had too much exposure to Luna. So when Luna imploded, it took a while, but eventually they went under. FTX had exposure to them that it created, and eventually FTX went under. So you have to ask, who has exposure to FTX, right? Who's either holding a lot of FTT tokens in the case of on-chain, and then as far as investments from other cryptocurrency companies, who, is, who has equity in FTX that is now not gonna get that back, that maybe they're requiring on that liquidity, and now they're gonna face their own capital crunch. Is it KuCoin, right? Is it MEXC? Is it BitMEX? Is it, you have to ask these questions, right? And so the contagion is far from over, right? So, uh, run on the bank at FTX. They were forced to liquidate their reserves. Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchen do have exposure. They put $650 million into FTX. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's absolutely crazy, right? Unsecured creditor, you know what I mean? Uh, so, FTX, because they were unable to meet uh, user uh, withdrawal demands. They were forced to liquidate their reserves in a number of securities, including illiquid cryptocurrencies like Solana. Yeah, so Solana is probably dead. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, hop on Arbitrum. Arbitrum's the new thing. ZK Sync's the new thing. Rollups are the next thing. Layer twos is the next is the next narrative. Uh, go out and qualify for your ZK Sync airdrop. Uh, I'm working on the I'm working on the guide. It's still relevant. I've put out some information on Twitter. Go search for it. Uh, but yeah, go qualify for some, for some airdrops. That's probably the best thing that you can do to kind of kind of kind of stem this this flood if you're looking for free money. 
Um, so FTX was the one that co caused the collapse in Solana. That's why Solana collapsed 30%, depleting the value of FTX's reserves. And just like we were going to have another liquidity collapse, CZ steps in to buy FTX for a song, right? But here's the thing. As we'll see, that likely isn't going to happen. But again, this is very early on coming and CZ is known for playing Koi. So maybe he buys FTX, maybe he doesn't. Maybe the discount gets deepened or maybe the contagion just is not contained to FTX because CZ doesn't buy it and just continues to spread. All right. So remember that if, if FTX is truly like absolutely insolvent, which I fully believe that they are, I fully believe that they are completely insolvent from the data we're going to go over here. It looks like they have about a $6 billion hole in their balance sheets. Um, uh, and we'll get over, we'll, we'll get over potentially like what we're going to go over at some evidence here, of an example of how that hole could have been created. All right. In general, I think at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the same old, same old, right? Like over leveraging themselves, extending loans when they shouldn't have, uh, taking directional bets on cryptocurrencies and not managing risk effectively. Right. Alameda research absolutely imploded. The rumors on the streets is that Christine who is the acting CEO of Alameda Research, uh, was walking around barking orders yesterday saying to hold the line on FTT, telling all the traders uh, at their desks to buy, to do whatever was necessary to, to hold FTT's price in place. Uh, and she was, uh, apparently the scuttlebutt is that she was fired yesterday, right? So she was literally escorted from the building. And remember, uh, I believe it's Adam Trabasco. He uh, stepped down as CEO of Alameda Research just a few months ago. So so you know what I mean? Because <laughs> he's like, I don't want anything to do with this, right? Got to get out while the getting's good. Have you guys seen that movie Margin Call, right? He's like, it's not panic if you're if you're the first one out the door. All right. Uh, so this is from uh, Quantarium saying that F, uh, finding some research here that FTX US and Alameda Research sending over three thousand Bitcoin to a merchant deposit address just twenty minutes ago. You know what I'm saying? All right. So this was posted. Uh, this was posted today, about two hours ago. So, uh, remember that user deposits are frozen and here we see, uh, Alameda Research and FTX, uh, sending money off the platform. Interesting. 3,000 wrapped Bitcoin. Wonder where that's going. Okay. Uh, so from Autism Capital, really great guy to follow on, FT on, on on Twitter if you guys aren't already. People familiar with FTX's corporate structure are sharing that there were no investors on the board. There was no oversight. The board was Sam Bankman-Fried and Jonathan Chessman, who quietly left FTX in October. Chessman was replaced by Nishad Singh, the director of engineering, right? So uh, there was a great picture. Uh, there was a great picture earlier. Um... Let me find it here. Uh, oh man, this was this is all that was on my feed today. Come on, load, load, load. Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah, so here's Sam Bankman Freed, and this is Caroline Ellison, the current CEO, supposedly, apparently she was axed yesterday, of Alameda Research. Uh, both her and Adam Trabasco were very uh, active in effective altruism, um, which, you know, was their own thing. So, yeah. Um, so, no no oversight. The board was three people. Sam bankman Free, Jonathan Chessman, who's a replacement of Saj Singh, and, and an attorney based in its corporate home of Antigua and Barbados. <laughs> Oh, the board did nothing. Sam had complete control. And that's how you can make these mistakes, right? Listen, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to dog too hard on Sam Bankman Freed uh, because the reality of the situation is he, he, he was a smart guy. He made, he, he was a, like a once, a, like maybe a once in a lifetime, you know, cryptocurrency genius guru type guy, you know, had a net worth of $24 billion at 29 years old. But he made he, he just made a mistake that, that many people who reach uh, high levels of success do, right? They forget that it takes a village, right? It takes a tribe. There's not a single individual out there who is able to do it all on its own. You need help. You need support. You need feedback. You need people to hold you accountable. You need people to call you out when you're wrong. That's what you need to scale and continue to grow successfully. You need it if you're trying to get up off, up off the ground. 
and you definitely need it when you reach higher levels of success. And it seems like, unfortunately, what Sam did is once he started, you know, just scaling and growing and growing, he just did everything himself, or for the most part, everything that he could for himself. And, and we can see that, you know, if you guys have been paying attention over the last couple of years, it's been very easy to see his health physically deteriorate. You know, he start, if, you, if you go back a few years, you know, he was, he was thin, he looked healthy, he was smiling, and then just over the, over the last couple of years, he's gotten really fat, very unhealthy. Uh, you know, he was shaking on a lot of live streams. So just to see, yeah, just to see his health deteriorate is just very sad to see. But that's what will happen to every single one of you if you happen to become very successful and you refuse to let people help you and you try to white knuckle control everything. You will burn your body out. You'll destroy yourself because you can't do it all on your own. Uh, all right, so FTX Ventures or Alameda Venture deals with the ones they led highlighted. So here we go. This is where FTX created a lot of problems for itself, right? So September uh, 2022, Miston Labs, Series B funding of $300 million. Uh, they funded, so they, they bailed out BlockFi to the tune of a quarter million dollars. They bailed out Voyager to the, to the tune of almost a quarter million dollars. Uh, they invested in Aptos, $150 million. Chipper Cash, $150 million. Liquid Global, Debt financing, they, they, they bailed out Liquid Global, $120 million. Um, uh, they invested in Amina Protocol, Dave, uh, Voyager Digital, they're $75 million. They invested in MobileCoin. Okay, so again, these people are taking massive directional bets on, on shit coins and bailing out other companies that are underwater due to the Luna contagion, or really the UST contagion, to be quite honest. And... Um, and not just running their company, right? Too big, too fast, and doing way too much, man. Doing way too much, all right? All right, so here's a little alpha here, I suppose. Uh, Alamata's game plan. Uh, so this was posted uh, early this morning. So. Tomorrow morning, uh, there is a $844, $845 million uh, unlock of Solana for Alameda. So very ironic, the timing of all of this. So they're going to try and do something with that. So um, here is a proposed idea of what their strategy might be, is they're going to send USDC to a centralized exchange, set spot Solana offers higher up, use USDC to gig along the perpetual, and then for short open interest to close out and fill their spot offers, okay? So this is how they're gonna cash out of their Solana. So what this is saying or what he is suggesting is that I would suggest you probably stay away from this, right? You don't wanna get caught up in the volatility that such a play can move. But again, the alpha on the, on the table potentially is long Solana now and See and and then and then probably uh, Alameda Research will go in tomorrow and try to and, and try to gig along the perp so that they can get rid of their Solana, but that's the problem. It's going to be probably quite difficult for you to get out of your position if you've got such a significant seller trying to sell. You might get lucky, you might not, but you might get stuck in a bag that's just going to fall down and down and down and down and down. So again, while this sounds interesting, I would likely avoid it. Here we go. Yeah, TLDR, don't get caught in the crossfire and manage your risk. Solana will bounce around like, oh, uh, well, you know. All right. Okay, so let's take a quick break and look at the chat. Uh, give me a second here while I find you guys. There we are. Oh, we had a super chat. I'm so sorry. I did see we had a super chat, but I was just in the zone. So uh, let's scroll up here, man. Um, yeah, so uh, going back here, Jibbles had said it's a crazy day, but we're not finished by any means. Absolutely not, man. Um, yeah, and uh, so let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's check in. Yeah, just absolute catastrophe in the cryptocurrency markets right now as we sink to $16,043 on BTC. The low was not in, the bottom was not in, 
funds, portfolios, wives, children have been destroyed. This is the end of the world and none will come back. I'm just kidding, guys. All right. This is bad. We've seen bad before. All right. We've seen lots of bad before. This was bad. Let's go back further in time. This was bad. Let's go back further in time. Oh, we, we're on, we're on Bybit. We got to go back way further in time. We're on Binance. Okay. I'll show, I'll tell you guys what was really bad. All right. This is when I got into crypto. This is when I started trading crypto full time right about here. All right. I had been investing in crypto throughout here, so it wasn't as bad as it seemed. Right. But but uh, yeah, this this whole year right here was was really good for us, but on, because we had a lot of success in altcoins. Uh, but with Bitcoin, is a lot of bashing our heads. But here, uh, this was bad. I mean, a lot of friends of mine got absolutely wiped out here. All right, um, I remember this very day. So back in 2018, uh, back in 20, and this is why I'm not taking any trades right now. Absolutely no reason to. Uh, back in 2018, uh, we were live on stream this day, right? And we had longed Bitcoin in this area some of these days, one of these days, and uh, the market dipped, right? And it did this. I didn't make the same mistake this time, right? I remember, I remember very clearly uh, the market dipped. So let me just zoom in and use my other draw tool because one's not happening. The market dipped, all right? And it broke these lows. And I thought to myself, well, that's it, right? That was the liquidity grab, and we are going to the moon from here, ladies and gentlemen. And I was completely wrong. So I took a long here, right? And I got stopped out. I lost 2% of my account. And then I realized, wow, what am I doing trading reversals? Like, what am I, like, Justin, what are you doing? You're not a reversal trader. You are a trend following trader. And what did you just see? Massive volume coming in. Massive volume coming in. What comes in at the beginning and end of trends? Volume. What does trend need? Volume. What do you need for price to continue moving a long way in the direction that you wanted to trade to make you a bunch of money? Volume. What are you doing? And I shorted. And we were able to recoup basically everything that we lost throughout this area because we did lose money on this on the screw you candle. So listen, guys, trading is hard. I've been doing this for five years. And all I want to tell you is that Couple things. The success of your trading is one, not going to be built on catching these rare moments. The success of your trading is going to be built on the consistency of your strategy over a long period of time. Okay. Um, but like I said, this is exactly what I posted to the members last night. I wasn't very aggressive last night. I did recommend shorting. I told people to take lower risk, obviously looking at this chart, right? I would, would I, would I say, oh, I wish I could have gone back and been like, put it all on black, short it all, make a million dollars. No, I'm glad I didn't because this could just as easily have popped back up, right? And liquidated everybody or taken the money. So I'm glad I didn't. But shout outs to everybody who caught the short position, the short movement. Congratulations to everybody who's sitting in cash. Again, what I've absolutely been recommending for the past six months in this space. Oh, are we bottomed out? Maybe, but only get a little, right? So. Uh, I purchased about 20% of all the BTC that I wanted to hold in my portfolio for the next bull run in this area. Okay. So I'm going to be down on that. All right. But what's my trading account doing? It's sitting in cash. That's where your guys should be as well. All right. So a lot of, a lot of good viewers here, man. Thank you guys for coming so much. I really appreciate, I really appreciate the, uh, I really appreciate the hype on the stream. This is awesome. Um, uh, Alex 81 SG, how can an, how can an exchange fail? Let's go down to the, let's go down to like the five minute. Cause this is pretty interesting, right? Cause life is just. Life is just terrible right now. Um, how can an exchange fail? It's like running an online casino with no substantial fixed assets or personnel with a business model that cannot generate losses. All I can think is that it was calculated. Well, again, yeah, kind of going back to that FTX thing, right? Maybe it was. Maybe it was calculated. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so everybody's talking about how Binance ha is pulling out from the deal to buy FTX. So I did not get to that. I actually saw that um, when I when I started this whole thing and then I was like, well, should I continue on with all this, like all these threads that I've uncovered all this evidence? Like, absolutely. Yes, I should. So, all right, before we get into, and we are going to do some technical analysis of, uh, of, of Bitcoin and Ethereum and the whole markets here in just a second. Uh, but before we do that, let us just finish wrapping up the tail of the tape for, uh,
for uh, FTX, all right? So this is Lucas Newsy. This is the juicy one, okay? So this is the type of behavior that FTX was engaged in uh, that potentially caused, there we go, that potentially caused uh, th their, their destruction, their collapse, right? So, uh, oh, by the way, massive shout out to Bob the Builder for the $20 super chat, man. I'm so sorry, a little scatterbrained sometimes, but thank you so much for the super chat, my brother. Uh, Paul, Bob the Builder, Guys, in our members lounge, in our Discord, discord.crackencryptocurrency.com. Make sure to join if you guys are not. It's one of the greatest places to find other traders to challenge you, push you to the next level in your trading, uh, and hold you accountable to the rules, hold you accountable to the things you said you were going to do, right? Because that's the biggest downfall of trading. That's where all the traders kind of fall into this pit. Well, you know, I, I got this strategy, but then this is, is kind of sexy, and I'm going to do this, and then I'm bullish one day, and then I'm bearish the next. No. You need a team, you need a community to hold you accountable. So if you guys are on a Discord and you've been lurking, don't lurk. Post your ideas. Go to the technical analysis channel. Post what you see. Go to the trading channel. Post the trades that you're taking. Share your results. Share your journey. That's the only way you're going to grow. If you sit there and you're afraid to share what you're doing, if you think that you're not good enough, if you think that you suck, that's the more reason to post. Get feedback. Grow. Learn. Get engaged. It's the only way. Sitting there, spinning, worrying about what you're doing is not the path forward. Anyway, so, okay, Lucas Newsy. I found evidence that FTX might have provided a massive bailout for Alameda in Q2, which has now come back to haunt them. 40 days ago, 173 million FTT tokens worth over 4 billion became active on chain. All right, so this is a little complicated, so I'm going to do this in, in as layman's terms that makes sense to me. And hopefully makes sense to you, okay? Because I am not an on-chain expert, all right? Um, you know, pretty good, pretty seasoned. I've done my I've done my time in Nansen AI and EtherScan, um, but uh, here we go. So that same day, over 8.6 billion USD worth of FTT was moved on-chain. All right, this was the largest move of FTT tokens in the token's existence, and one of the largest ERC20 daily moves they've ever recorded. Lucas Newsy works over at Coinmetrics. Okay, so he went through all the transactions that day and ranked them. And this uh, transaction was very interesting. So this was a contract from the FTT initial coin offering, all right, where they released all these tokens, okay? Uh, now, this 2019 contract automatically, automatically released 173 million FTT tokens from the tokens ICO pool, all right? So the recipient of that $4.19 billion worth of FTT tokens was Alameda Research. So just to make sure we're on the same page and that made sense so far, this analyst saw that on, what was it, September 9th, September 28th, 2022, one of the largest ERC-20 token transfers occurred on the Ethereum blockchain. That, that, Ether, that, that ERC-20 token was FTT. The value of that transfer was a little over $4 billion. And it was a release of FTT tokens from the ICO smart contract and the recipient was Alameda Research, which is the trading arm of FTX, All right? FTX started as Alameda Research. They made a lot of money trading and then they found that FTX, okay? Um, so he's like, so what? Alameda were, and FTX were intrinsically connected from day one and Alameda obviously participated in the FTX ICO, but then Alameda immediately sent all of that money right back to FTX, Okay or the deployer of the FTT ERC-20, which is controlled by someone at FTX. So in other words, Alameda auto-vested $4.19 billion worth of FTT just to send it immediately back to FTX, i.e. Alameda received $4.19 billion and immediately sent it back to FTX. Why would that happen? Uh, here's what uh, Lucas thinks happens, that Alameda blew up in Q2 along with Three Arrows, Cop uh, Three Arrows Capital, Celsius, Voyager, and all the other uh, centralized lending institutions, and it only survived because it was able to secure funding from FTX using as collateral the 172 million FTT that it was guaranteed to vest. So, uh, let me let me let me put that in mind. So, they had this money that was going to be unvested, right? They went insolvent and they took a loan and immediately paid it back with what the money they were supposed to get. All right. So once vested, all tokens were sent back as repayments. Right. So if FTX had let Alameda, so why would FTX do this? Right. Well, you know, sure, they're friends with Alameda, whatever, right? 
But if FTX had let Alameda implode, that collapse would have ensured the subsequent liquidation of all FTT tokens vested in September. It would have been terrible for FTX because it would have imploded the price of FTT. All right, the timing makes sense. So Alameda and FTX put all their chips on the table in Q2, use that cash to bail others out. This solidified FTX's image as solvent and responsible. Remember, oh, they bailed out Voyager, they bailed out, they, they bailed out Celsius, they bailed out uh, that other one, the loan capital or whatever. Um, and then the Alameda bailout put a dent on FTX's balance sheet to the point where it was no longer solvent. So again, uh, FTX giving Alameda Research that money to bail them out made them insolvent. That was the straw that broke the camel's back, all right? Uh, this would have been fine if the price of FTT didn't collapse and a bank run ensued, but the prices of FTT did collapse because CZ put out that rumor that FTX was potentially insolvent. He didn't say that, but he said that they're liquidated their FTT because he had concerns. And how can you then turn around and say that I didn't try to orchestrate this master plan when you absolutely did put out the information that they were insolvent in the first place? Oh, my God. <sighs> okay. And this makes sense why all the rumors... Uh, from Al from Alameda is that Caroline, the CEO of Alameda, was running around yesterday barking orders to hold the line on FTT to, lot, to not let it go down any farther. But unfortunately, she did. And that's why we have the situation that we have right now. Okay. Why we have the situation that we have right now. Uh, and here we go. But the folks at Binance knew about this arrangement. An opportunity emerged. They started taking the price of FTT. Binance comes to CZ's rescue. But uh, yeah, so just some more evidence. Uh, and this was actually probably the best summarized version of how everything went down. All right. Alameda went broke, went insolvent. FTX bailed it out. That caused FTX to become insolvent. CZ kind of knew about this, created the FUD, started dumping the price of FTT. Now FTX is in a serious pickle, freezes user withdrawals. CZ steps in to buy, but now he's saying um, no. He just tweeted this less than 30 minutes ago. As a result of corporate due diligence, as well as the latest news reports regarding mishandled customer funds and alleged U.S. agency investigations, we have decided that we will not pursue the potential acquisition of FTX.com. So. Ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry if you have funds on FTX, but for the time being, you might as well just consider them And that doesn't make me happy. I'm not gloating. I'm here with you. This is the FTX victim support group. But um, yeah, that's where we're at. All right. Uh, scroll through the chat here real quick. And and then we will do uh, our analysis here. If you guys are enjoying the stream and you want to continue seeing content like this, obviously do all the YouTube regulars. It really does help us out. If you smash that like button, it lets more people know that we do put out good content because we do put out good content. I do absolutely try my best. And uh, we we're not streaming daily, but we're going to be streaming regularly soon. I do promise. So make sure to subscribe. We're going to be putting out a lot of amazing content right now. So hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, bell notifications if you want to catch them all and never miss an episode. And if you do that, I swear to God, within the next seven days, you will get a free cookie. I'm not sure where, I'm not sure how, but if you subscribe to this channel and push the like button on this video, you will get a free cookie. Take it on faith. All right. Uh, Bitcoin trading, thanks for the presentation. No problem, my friend. Thank you for being here. Jibble says that's probably the email CZ just wants you to see. And then there's the other one. He is cunning. He is cunning. Uh, shout outs to Freeman Cryptoverse. Uh, B Flow says only up to 250K. You're screwed. I, to be, you know what? I had, um, so I had, I can actually tell you right now, I do have funds on FTX, but oh, hold on, just let my loading. Oh, man. Uh, okay. I got logged out of my three commas. So, um, I have less than a thousand dollars on FTX. I'm not going to lie. I, um, I just, you know what? I'm not, I'm, I don't know. I don't know why. Right. I do know why because, uh, Bybit's a better exchange. 
I've been trading on Bybit for the last two years. I've never had a single issue on there. Uh, there's never been any FUD about Bybit. There's never been any, you know, this or that. Alan, thank you so much for the sub over here on YouTube, my friend. Welcome to the community. Um, you know, just just never, never had any issues on on, on Bybit. And um, and I just never because I was already doing so well on Bybit, there was just never any push or pull to go over to for me to go over to FTX. I mean, you know, I get emails, I get hundreds of emails every single day like, "Hey, will you be a sponsor for us? Will you be a sponsor for us? Will you trade for us? Will you put your our affiliate link, you know, you can make 50% or what whatever, right?" And uh, it's just not, you know, it's just not whatever. Nicholas, thanks so much for the sub over here on YouTube, my friend. Texas Blue says, thanks to you and all your teaching since 2018. All cash and shorting on Bybit. Love you, brother. Good to see you, my friend. Love you too, man. Uh, Alex81SG, crypto has become a way for companies to crypto quickly raise funds where tokens have no real utility. I think pretty much everything outside of L1, L2 is destined to be regulated. Out of Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing like a good... Let's see here. <laughs> Alexander Pearson says, yeah, sure, I've lost money, but I'll have negative money. So I'm beating three arrows, capital, three arrows capital I made up. Shout out to senior analyst Alexander Pearson, the king of DeFi. If you guys want to know how to make money in the multiverse, Alexander Pearson is your man. Make sure to check him out with me on the show, probably at least once a week moving forward. Um... Alex, you got any takes on? Sorry, I, there's a lot of chat in here, man. Uh, I'm watching the chat now, though. Any uh, any take on, on what we got going on? Let's see here. Um, Nicholas Nicholas T. What do I think about the market? Will it recover fast? I mean, okay. I'll tell you what my intuition is, and my intuition is no. All right, I don't have any empirical data or evidence on. You know, like how quickly will the market recover? I mean, let's let I mean, likely not. Right. I mean, I would actually say that the data suggests probably absolutely not. Right. Because here, let's go look uh, just for funsies. All right. Um, we'll go look at the bitstamp chart of BTC USD. All right. And we'll just get kind of get rid of all this stuff. Right. And we'll just look kind of clearly and cleanly. All right. So so when the market actually sorry. When the market actually bottomed, right? So this is obviously going back real far, but here's the 2013 run up. And so here's the 2014, 2015 bear market. And the 2014, 2015 bear market uh, lasted, like let's say from peak to trial, right? It lasted uh, 427 days, all right? So about a year and a half it took to reach the bottom. And then once it reached the bottom, uh, we had 259 days or about two thirds of a year of consolidation. All right, before we began a run up and that run up lasted, well, you know, almost three years. Uh, but then we have the 2018 bear market. The 2018 bear market took 357 days, so a little under a year. And then we consolidated once the lows were in, we consolidated for 119 days. So that so a third of a year. All right. And then we had a nice run up pull back. Uh, but again, there are some analysts out there who say that like this is the bear market and then this whole thing is consolidation, which means the consolidation lasted 966 days uh, or almost two and a half years. So there you have it. And then run up. And so now this current bear market has now lasted 364 days. So almost a full year, a full year tomorrow, give or take, right? These numbers are off. So we are right in line. Maybe this, maybe now this might be the bottom. We bottom at 16K. And, and I'll tell you why I think that way, right? So if you guys were with 15844 now, but if you guys will recall, if you guys will recall, um, uh, um, I've been putting out a lot of research this year and one of the big ones, FTX is down. <laughs> Uh, GBU Wally throwing in that member for 28 months. Thank you so much, my friend. Yeah, trough. Yeah, peak to trough. Did I say peak to trowel? Yeah, trowel is you dig, you dig it, you dig with a trowel. You dig a trough with a trowel. My bad, man. You keep the mission moving. 
Okay, uh, Redco over on DLive saying he's hoping we get 11K. Weekly loss rip. Um, Moonshine Fuel says, I lost a few hundred in FTX value, but technically I only invested around 50 bucks or so, I believe, and traded up to that level, so poof gone. Uh, FTX is done for good. Solana follows. Anything to keep the spirits up. Um... Glad I never joined FTX. Been close to regular 2X. Freeman's Cryptoverse. Trader's Toolkit says, lost four grand. Thank God for Bybit. I'm not sure if you mean that. I'm not sure if that's ironic or not. Yes. Yes, I did see that Binance refused the FTX purchase. Yeah, so let me pull my glass note up. Um... And give me, you know what, guys, give me about 30, give me, give me like one minute. Give me like one minute. I will be right back. Um, there it is. Hmm.
Thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. We're ready. We're doing this. Boom. We're not be right back anymore. Okay. Oh. Thank you very much. I should have put... Uh, should have put some uh, some music on. That would probably make this a little bit more, a uh, little bit funner. Uh, but we got a good thing going. We got a lot of viewers live on the stream. Let's not muck it about. Okay. Um, Traders Toolkit have most of my funds on Bybit. Absolutely. Do I see a stop in this? Cue the oh, cue the yeah yeah of course cue the music. Two minutes we wait. Thank you so much. Uh, at this time, FTX has probably had to cease market activities in preparation for filing. And then, yeah, Alexander Pearson uh, saying that he's in chats with funds. They're saying this is potentially worse than Celsius. I mean, this is absolutely, this This has to be worse than Celsius. I mean, you know, it, with Celsius, we were just kind of dealing with, with a bunch of user deposits, right? And FTX, you know, we're dealing with, man. Yeah, Redco, great point. The reserve for FTX on Glassnode uh, is in uh, the reserve for FTX on Glassnode and Bitcoin and Ethereum. So um, let's, uh, I wanted to pull open, I wanted to pull open a very interesting chart as we're, as we're just watching this, as we're just watching this happen. Powerless to do anything about it. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about here. We're not powerless to do anything about it. We'll talk a little bit here about um, the difference between being a trader and an investor and why I like being a trader. Um, and it's not being married to something, right? Uh, it, it's, it's a difficult concept to these price drop. Yeah, that's a good, that, that, that is possible, right? Are these price drops potentially FTX selling collateral for cash, Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. It's like walking on, walking on broken glass. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so let me get uh, let me get a glass node pulled open here, and we'll open up my bear market mirage dashboard because we're we've passed and we're approaching some very interesting price levels that we have talked about in the past. Here we go, one quick sec. And we are gonna queue up some music actually. Uh, options, preferences, output device is going to be music. Okay, close, play. That music needs to go up or go down. Alright? I do not have my headphones on. Uh, Nigel, does anyone know the best discount fee code for buy this? Uh, I am not, I am not against uh, self promotion. to find a nice balance here. What about What about now? Yeah, I want to here. Let me here. Let me, let me turn my stream on. 
Yeah, it's still too loud. Sorry, guys. Now we should hear... Man, it's just too loud, isn't it? Oh, I know. There we go. Hmm. Just not a happy balance, huh? Okay. All right, well, you know what? I guess we just don't get music. We just can't have nice things, you know what I mean? We try. Um, we just don't, we just can't have nice things. All right, anyways. Um, what were we talking about? Okay, so, glass note. Last node does not want to load. So let's see if we can't go to a past market analysis. Yeah, I don't think Tether is going to go anywhere either. But of course, every time, um, literally every time, here we go. Uh, here we go. This is the chart that I want. All right. So this is on our, on our, um, our, our cracking cryptocurrency blog. You guys can find this at crackingcryptocurrency.com forward slash blog. Check the link in the description. Uh, but this is the valuation model that I generated on Glassnode. All right. And we've got some very interesting price points here. So uh, the yellow line was Bitcoin's realized price hanging out around $17,000, $16,000. Uh, or excuse me, sorry, sorry, about $18,000. And what's interesting about the realized price is that that was almost the same thing as because it's crept up the cost of mining has crept up right so the difficulty regression model is something that glassnode offers and allows us to see the calculated estimated cost of bitcoin mining all in right the cost of mining all in okay and we're seeing miners in massive droves turn off their mining machines, just turn off their mining machines. And when not, not only do they have to turn off their mining machines, but when their operation stops being profitable, when the Bitcoin that they're mining right now stops being profitable, when they can't sell the Bitcoin that they're generating right now from their current block rewards, um, then what they have to do is they have to start selling their reserves. And if enough people do this in masses, we get this massive downside price pressure. Um, but the delta price, the delta price, which has previously caught, and I just wish, uh, just wish that this would load. So I'm going to come over here and see if I can open it up in another browser. There we go. There we go. I'm getting it to work here. Uh, glass node, glass node, glass node. Yeah, I really want to pull this open for you guys. Man. It's like, are all the cryptocurrency websites being funky right now? 
like Bitcoin crashes and and all crypto websites are like, we're out, we quit. There we go. I got it to load in Brave. Here we go. Got it. All right, so I want to look at these. Uh, this model has served me very well in the past. So let's go to my dashboards and we'll go to my bear market Mirage dashboard. Just when we thought everything was, was looking good. Uh, that's an odd one. There we go. Okay, excellent. Um, let's do, there we go. So a couple options. Let's look at our valuation models. All right, we're going to zoom in. So as you guys can see here, if we look at the last three years. All right, actually, let's look at the last five years. All right, so this is a combination of Bitcoin's realized price. All right, uh, and realized price is an attempt to calculate what the, what the um, not like what the total market capitalization is. Uh, or excuse me, it's an attempt to look at all Bitcoin based on the price at which they last moved, right? So it's a more balanced uh, assessment of what the current value of Bitcoin is based on where everybody bought in and where everybody sold. So you can see that we're trading far underneath the realized price. Now, the balance price is a different metric uh, that attempts to calculate um, a Bitcoin's price. And as you guys can see, we're right there. And previously, uh, the balance price caught the dip uh, here in 2022. Uh, and it's caught previous bear market lows here. So it actually caught the closing basis back in 2018. Uh, and it caught the wick here in 2020. All right. You can't see it on that chart, but it caught the wick of the bottom of the March meltdown in 2020. So very powerful bottom indicator. Uh, but then we have, as you can see, what caught the wick at the bottom of 2018, what actually caught the real bottom back in 2018. And that was the Delta price. And this is a hybrid on-chain and technical indicator. And right now, it is calling for a low price of 12,843, all right? So we've blown through the realized price at 21,000. We are currently right around the, real, the balance price of 16,411. And we've got a low down target of 12,843. All right. Now, I'm not saying price can't go lower than that, but I'm saying that those are our current targets. All right. Those are our current downside targets. If we find consolidation here, potential that the bear market's over. But most likely, guys, with the strength of this contagion, what's going to happen here is likely this. This is the scenario uh, that I see happening. Uh, here is the scenario that I see happening over the next few months uh leading up to the to april to spring of 2023 here's what i see happening from now to the spring of 2023 so to understand this let's look exactly at what price did here all right so we have here we have, th this is what we have here, I think, maybe. I'm going to speculate on this first part here, but bear with me, guys. I'm, I'm sure you guys can agree. So we have natural bull market. We've seen this in crypto a bunch of times, right? Everybody's getting in. Everybody's making money. Everything is great. Everything is beautiful. The world is amazing. And we have profit taking along the way. This is smart money, right? Taking money in droves. Smart money taking money in droves. Okay, smart money is taking a lot of money in droves, right? This is somebody had to close out a lot of money and this happened in mass human psychology is weird cycles are weird things tend to happen all at once around the world for the same reason for different particularities all right jordan stotts you are not late all right then we have the market pushed back up 
right? Whether this was the second wave of buyers or whatever the impetus was for it, it's a bunch of things happening all at once. That's the beautiful thing about the market. When you have something as huge and liquid as massive as this, you know, you can sit around and speculate like, well, it was a conspiracy theory this, and it was a conspiracy theory that. Uh, and it was these guys who absolutely control the market, and it was the reptilian lizard lords, and it was these people. But the reality is when you have a multi-billion dollar market capitalization uh, and you have such a decentralized um, basis of this currency, the reality is this: none of this stuff is massively or you know engineered and organized. There are plots. There are people working together. There are people working together with similar interests. But at the end of the day, you're seeing a lot of randomness and you're just seeing a lot of natural market mechanics, all right? We have expansion periods, according to Wyckoff theory, all right? We have the period of markup, we have markdown, we have mark back up, and then we enter into a true stage of markdown with the end of the bear market. So far, nothing weird. Yes, there was some speculation along the way about this massive buyback, but we've, whatever. So, uh, so we have the bear market of 2022. Okay, good times are over. People took profits. Nobody's interested. Everybody who wanted to buy has bought. And when everybody who wants to buy has bought, there's only one way the market can move, and that's down because all the buyers are exhausted. They're, they're out of capital. Okay, so I want to propose that this right here could have been the bottom of the bear market, all right? I really want to propose that. I really want you guys to get out of your head, and I want you to think outside the box about this, all right? Because I think the area that I have circled on the chart right here could have and should have been the bottom of the bear market, all right? There was a lot of momentum. Things were going good. Regulation was coming in. Companies were booming. Development was happening. Protocols were launching. But what happened here? What happened here, right? What happened here? We have the implosion. We have the implosion of Terra Luna, all right? And the collapse of the DeFi ecosystem, all right? Now, everybody who had reserves in Bitcoin and Ethereum or exposure to Terra Luna went insolvent and the contagion begins. The contagion begins and it goes and it goes and it goes, all right? Now, this downtrend that I just plotted out was the result of, of the contagion as it's being called, right? The contagion as it's being called as companies that were invested, heavily invested in cryptocurrency that had a lot of stake in cryptocurrency, but were not managing either users' funds well, or were not managing their own capital effectively, or were not, in the end, managing risk effectively, managing risk effectively. They lost it all. They lost it all, and that contagion spread out in prices, and you, the investors, paid the price. They lost it all, and prices went down. Now, I want to propose to you that this area of the market could have been the bottom this should have been the bottom but yet again the contagion spreading into everything that we do and ftx goes insolvent and down we go down we go down to these news lows all right down to these new lows now i'm going to propose to you that what should have happened here right one year long bear market long period of consolidation great this should have been a breakout. This chart should have looked like this. We should be, we should have been, this stream should have had 100 plus people on it just 20 minutes ago uh, for a completely different reason, right? This stream should have had 100 plus people on it because there was this candle looking like this and everybody's like, oh my God, are we going to 60,000? What are we doing? What? But instead, we have 100 people on here because they're like, what's going on? Is crypto over? Are the feds? Is it the CIA? Did Bitcoin get hacked? Is Roger Veer Satoshi Nakamoto, right? And so that's what should have happened. But then FTX goes insolvent. The contagion spreads. And here we are. So this is what's likely going to happen here, guys. What's likely going to happen here is uh, I could see a, a case of us bottoming here around the $16,000 area. Don't want to put my name on it. We just kind of, listen, I've been trading cryptocurrency for five years. I'm a successful trader, right? Things have been well. I've built a cryptocurrency trading company. I've built software. I teach, I've taught thousands upon thousands of people how to trade cryptocurrency successfully. I don't know if this is the bottom or not. Nobody does, okay? So the best thing you can do is one, if you're shorting, don't be greedy. Don't be too greedy. Take some profits, lock it in, 
You want to be careful shorting. Shorting is not like longing. Longing, you add to your position, add to your position, add to your position. Uh, shorting, when we're taking out lows and we're forming new lows, you want, you want to be careful. Um, what I see here is now we have to restart the consolidation period, right? Now that all the contagion might be potentially out of the system, we're going to have another consolidation period. But like I said earlier, is the contagion out of the system? Remember, 3AC implodes or excuse me, Luna implodes, 3AC implodes, Celsius implodes, FTX steps in and bails out, makes bad investments, FTX implodes. So you have to ask who has exposure to FTX, right? Who has exposure to FTX? That is the question you have to ask yourself. Who's next on the chopping block? Is it KuCoin? Right? Is it MEXC? Is it BitMEX? Is it who? Who is it, right? Is it Bitstamp? Is it Bitfinex? Who's next on the chopping block? And I would argue that if it's going to be any one of them, it's going to be KuCoin. All right? It's going to be KuCoin. It's going to be KuCoin. Okay? If it's going to be any one of them, it's likely going to be KuCoin, okay? Now, again, it might not be any one of them. And if that is the case, then if we do end up bottoming in here and enter into a period of consolidation, then there's a strong argument that that will be the bottom, right? And we rise from here, right? It's probably going to take four or six months, maybe. Spring, summer of 2023, things will do okay. Uh, but this just set us back like six months at the very least. This set us back six months at the very least. Remember, like I said, this should have been the bull run. Or at least a bear market rally, a significant one. But FTX goes insolvent. Now we're down here. Now we get to repeat the process all over again. Uh, and that's if we stop here, all right? So I'm just gonna mark out that $13,000, $12,000 area. Uh, sorry, let's go back to Glassnode. And currently that delta price is sitting at 12,843. So let's just go put that on the chart. Okay, 12,843 potential bottom. All right. We've got some confirmation, previous horizontal support. But again, what are horizontal levels? What are trend lines? They are probabilities. They are not assurances. Trading, and this is why, so now I want to talk about strategies for dealing with this type of situation, okay? Strategies for dealing with this type of situation, okay? So, it's a very difficult concept for many traders and investors, particularly in cryptocurrency, to internalize. So, I'm going to do my best to burn it into your brain so that you can understand it. Because if you understand this simple concept... Your results will be better, your losses will be less, your wins will be greater, you will sleep easier at night, you will feel more competent and confident with what you're doing in the markets, okay? And that simple one thing is this. You will never know what direction price is going to go, ever, okay? Trading and investing is hard. Mentally, emotionally, sometimes physically. And the reason it is, is because it's not like other jobs. It's not like other things that you do where you know for sure how to do something. If you go to school to be a developer, so you've studied computer science, right? Python works this way. If you write the code this way in Python, it does this same thing. It's the scientific method, reproducible data. If I write a Python script, right, and I send it to you, 
and you use the same script with the same compiler, you're going to get the same result. Okay? Code's going to do the same thing. But, and here, like here's another example, right? Uh, you know, like medical science, okay? Supplements influence this part of the body. This medicine does this thing to the body. If you want to perform surgery on somebody, you do it this way, and it works the same way. Fundamental knowledge, facts, logic. Trading is not like that. You will never know for sure whether price is going to go up, go down, go sideways, left, right, zigzag, don't know, okay? Just because something's oversold doesn't mean it's not going to keep going lower. Just because something's breaking out doesn't mean it's not going to just pop right back down. Doesn't mean it's going to continue breaking out. What's very frustrating about trading and investing psychologically on people is often the fact that it's unpredictable. So you have to train your brain to think in terms of probabilities, okay? And I'll give you a hint, a big dash of humility is a big bonus, okay? Too often I've worked with traders, tutored traders, taught traders, and they come in, it's a very common scenario. People will come to Kraken Cryptocurrency where we teach people how to build profitable trading strategies. And they'll say, Justin or whoever, whoever's their, 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 their mentor, I'm struggling with my trading, not getting the results that I want. What can I do to change it? And I'll tell them, okay, well, you, you know, let's start at the beginning, right? We're going to use data. We're going to use statistics to build up an engine of probability so that we can have a trading strategy that gives you a high likelihood of success. And they'll be like, what about my trend lines? What about my support and resistance lines? What about this? What about that? I'm like, those will come later, right? They're not, they're not super important. Or, you know, I meet people who are just so committed to the idea that this is, uh, you know, I hear this all the time. Like, oh man, every time this is, every time it's oversold or every time the RSI is oversold, I buy. Every time Ichimoku breaks out, I buy. And, um, there's nothing wrong with using trend lines. There's nothing wrong with using horizontal support and resistance. There's nothing wrong with using the Ichimoku. Ichimoku is one of the best indicators out there. But there is something wrong with thinking that you could ever or have or will ever develop a system that will for sure give you correct trades all the time. It's not going to happen. And that's very frustrating for people, especially in moments when their strategy stops working very well or in moments like this, if they're losing a lot of money. Uh, it, it's just it can be very debilitating psychologically. All right. And hard on people. And I know, right? Like, you know, the people that I love have dealt with my insanity for the last five years. And uh, it hasn't been easy, but it's, it's a fun life. And I wouldn't give it up for anything. So Okay, so let's segue that and talk about a slight fundamental difference between trading and investing. So Bitcoin has, and cryptocurrency, has a very strong herd mentality. All right, put on the 15-minute chart here so we can watch. And uh, just for fun, we're going to be doing some trading. So we'll throw on our, um, we'll throw on our reversal system, and we're going to be using the 30-minute chart for this, all right? Um, so let's see here. Uh, extremely oversold. We do have a little bit of a cross up. Uh, we were also beneath the lower bound of the Bollinger Band, crossing back up. Uh, we do have bottom, con we do have, excuse me, oversold potential confirmation from the CM Williams VIX fix and from the CM Laguerre PPO. Uh, these, uh, these three indicators in combination with the Bollinger Bands uh, are very powerful for identifying local tops and bottoms. Uh, I'm not recommending anybody take any huge swings. And if you are trading in this area right now, you have to make sure you know what your risk is. One of the great ways to know your risk is to use a tool like Quadrigo. This is available to all the members of our trading group. Uh, so they can automatically calculate exactly how much to risk per trade, uh, what their position size should be, and what their take profits and stop losses should be. All this, is, of course, is adjustable in here. All right. Sure. Uh, here, I'll write these in the chat for you, Nicholas. Uh, 
uh, those are four indicators. This is a this is a an example of a PTP trading strategy. This is a strategy that we teach people to build in our trading school, um, and it is just an example of how you can build a robust technical indicator based trading system. Uh, and then, of course, there's many more components to it, like how much you risk per trade. Uh, you know how what your por total portfolio risk is, how you log your trades, how much risk you take, what your stop and target are, how to build a watch list of assets how to backtest all of your strategies on your assets that you want to trade and how you can actually finally, instead of just randomly trading whatever pops up on the news feed or chasing the latest pump and dump hype, you can build a backtested profitable strategy and then test that on every single coin that you want to trade so that you know for sure what your odds for success are with every single trade you take. And that you trade at the same time every day, you trade the same assets every day, you trade the same way consistently and you trade it with an edge, and that's how you're able to put in good years, good months, good days, day after day. Um, so there is a missing piece of the puzzle here. You need to be watching open interest, okay? What is open interest telling us right now? Well, uh, open interest is extremely negative. Let's actually go to the 30 minute time frame so we can see this very well. Open interest has been skyrocketing lately. All right, this is good. We saw a complete collapse of open interest throughout this whole decline and then massive dump. We've had two legs of this dump so far, or three legs if you want to consider leg one, leg two. Here we are in the midst of leg three. Open interest is picking up. Unfortunately, cumulative volume delta has not begun picking up. Let's take a more granular look at volume and see if we can see any increase. We did see a bit of an increase in buying pressure here. Uh, and we do see some increase in buying pressure here. Um, unfortunately, yeah, so we've seen the same reduction. So volume is dying down. Of course, funding is negative. We just had a ton of long liquidations come in as well, uh, but nothing like up here. The brunt of the long li liquidations were right here. So now we're kind of capturing the dregs. It is harder to liquidate individuals the farther out you go. Of course, we are going to be liquidating like higher risk individuals that are just jumping into the markets right now. Okay, so let's take this off and let's just talk about the difference between investing and trading. So, so cryptocurrency builds up the, oh dude, P-flow. Well, all right, listen, the audience asks and they shall receive. So we will take a quick, uh, quick break uh, and we will leave you with, uh, with former junior analyst. When you first learned Can't catch a break over on BitMEX with all the wicks? Try a better alternative at bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com and rest easy for a change. It gets me, I laugh every time. It's so good. It's, it's just so, so good. We can't, like words do not describe how awesome and excellent that, that ad was. Um, let's, uh... Let's see if we can't get some. So let's get, see if we can't get some analysts on the stream and we can discuss what's going on here. All right, so I sent the feelers out. Excuse me.
Okay. In a few minutes, we'll have a couple of analysts joining us so we can get a more robust view of the markets here. Oh, what's going on? We've got Mass Stash himself in the chat. Uh, yeah, so let's just break down what's going on. Yeah, the cryptocurrency markets are absolutely imploding. Uh, Bitcoin is down about 25% within the last few days. Uh, and just with kind of the start of the collapse yesterday, we are down 22 uh, almost 23 of that 25 percent so yeah down 23 percent in the last two days two massive absolute death destruction and evil candles bitcoin now below sixteen thousand dollars although we have traded up off the lows a little bit uh, but again i'll caution you guys remember that we traded up off the lows to the tune of eight percent yesterday and that did not stop the flood and of course keep in mind that we have the contagion spreading and spreading Jordan Stott saying silver and gold are staying strong. Uh, this is, uh, hold on, hold on. This is on FTX. Let's go all. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think so. I had been hearing that uh, the spy was earlier, uh, earlier in the morning. Um... Uh, early, earlier in the morning, people were talking about how the spy was pumping, and I do see that that is not the case. Here we go. Ever since they added the P's, it takes me a while to find it. Good to see the gang back together again. So let's talk about what this means. Um, so open interest is rising. What does that mean? Open interest is a metric that just tracks how many positions are being put on. So uh, there are many different ways that you can analyze, use, and view open interest, but essentially it is a great indicator of volume and volatility. All right. Now, the only thing is that it, oh, excuse me, it is a tool. And like all things, it doesn't tell you uh, whether it's longs or shorts that are putting on positions. So we like to use another tool. A popular tool called cumulative volume delta uh, to let us know whether it's longs or shorts putting on those positions. And what we can see uh, here is very, very clear um, that basically here we have Bitcoin going sideways prior to the beginning of the catastrophe, to the beginning of the massacre. Uh, and we have open interest uh, dropping, right? Open interest drops uh, in total about 23%, meaning this is just by bit. So 23% of all positions on Bybit closed out uh, over the course of a couple of days here as the price just basically went sideways. And these are likely longs closing out their positions in profit. Uh, and then we, get to, then we begin to see this, um, this, this big spike in open interest right here, big spike in open interest right here. Uh, and this is longs putting on positions. And then here we go, we just have open interest dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. And this, what this is, is this is longs closing out their positions, right? And we can see this, we can see this uh, by the, the downward curve of this. So although, uh, so here's, here's what I wanna point out. Uh, even though open interest is dropping here, we have to understand that this isn't all just, uh, it's not just all the longs being closed out. This metric is also being buoyed up by the fact that shorts are opening up positions too. And we know that it's shorts opening up positions because of the cumulative volume delta. So significant sell side pressure coming in and on Bybit. You can't sell, you can short, right? There's shorts and longs. That's all you can do. Um, you can't sell, close the position. So Okay, so Here's what I'm going to do. Bear with me for just a second while I bring on senior analyst Alexander Pearson for his breakdown of the markets. So we will do. Um, I do kind of feel like.
I believe I finally found a nice balance on the music. Hopefully you guys will agree. Uh, this is, um, oh shoot. I used to know the name of this. Uh, this is the Razor Huntsman Elite, uh, Javier, uh, mechanical keyboard. Yeah, it is, it's clickety clackety. something okay that worked excellent all right all you right. guys should be able to hear uh mr pearson on the stream i do have senior analyst alexander pearson on the stream with me this evening uh, alex how are you doing tonight I'm well thank you what uh yeah uh, i mean obviously we've got this complete calamity collapse and contagion happening on in front of us by the way shout outs to mass stash member for 28 months on the channel <laughs> i seem to recall that guy i seem to recall that guy um he's got a good question your thoughts on drop soon after the dow guy die i think uh i do believe he's talking about uh the situation yeah, that actually like yeah, the yeah, situation Nikolai. that literally so, just happened down there in Puerto Rico. So, so actually, Nikolai, Nikolai lived on island with me, and I uh, we we have several mutual friends in common. Um, I don't think the market drop has anything to do with his death. Um, in either direction, I don't think like he was like short on like money because of the drop either. Um, I I won't go into like further details. Like a lot of that is speculation I've heard from friends, and I you know I would want to talk out of turn. Uh, but no, I, I would say that there's nothing that has to do with that at all. And from what I understand, you know, everybody liked Nikolai. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Convoluted situation. So Alex, what do you think? I mean, obviously we've got a lot going on here right now. Um, is crypto doomed? Is this the end? Are the good times over? Do we all need to go get jobs now? Um, not at all. I'm 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 super excited by the price drop. This this means even better prices for us to buy at. So, uh, there's there's an old saying I can't remember uh, who what, what famous trader said it, but he said that the the stock market is the only place where people panic when something goes on sale. <laughs> it's like it's like oh my, it's like everybody's been wanting to buy Bitcoin. Like oh my god, I can't believe I didn't buy Bitcoin below twenty thousand dollars. I'm such a fucking idiot. Like you know, um. And then, and then price goes back below $20,000 and people don't celebrate, people panic. And it's, it's just, it's funny uh, because people have these opposite, 
opposite. The, the emotional reactions are almost the exact opposite of the logical reaction that you should have. I mean, you know, sometimes emotions and logic, you know, they can they can diverge, but it's it's like almost like polar opposite in this case. So I, I've I've trained myself. I feel excited. That's how I feel. It's like awesome. We we broke new support. Great. We're gonna find a new price. We're gonna be able to buy at that price. Um, if you haven't moved some money into cash over the past 10 months, like, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, you know, I mean, it's, you know, the bear market started a little while back. You should have had some money in cash. So I hope you're prepared to buy some dips like, like I am. And like Justin is. Yeah. Wise As words, bottom man. Feeder, bottom feeder gave its last signal, uh, right before the top we scored. We literally, we top fed, actually, we, we grabbed a chunk of the top and then, uh, everything collapsed. Bottom feeder hasn't gone off yet. Um, I would be interested to see if bottom feeder gave a signal tonight or tomorrow sometime soon. Yeah. I mean, I would assume that it would just given current market conditions. Uh, let's take, I kind of want to see what's going on on the weekly here. This is where, this is where we really shine. Let's gander. Guys, buy when there's blood in the streets. I didn't say that. It's Warren Buffett who said that. Buy when there's blood in the streets, guys. This is blood. So start looking for buying opportunities. Start start look, looking up stuff. That's what you should be doing in these moments like this. If you feel panic, use that. Identify that emotion inside of yourself and see, aha, this is what the other market participants are feeling. If they are selling at a price that is bad for them, it is therefore a price that is good for me, right? Because I'm on the opposite side of that trade. This is how you guys need to train yourselves. Wise words, my friend, wise words. And that's, that's exactly true, right? If we look back at, I mean, listen, here's the thing. If we look back at all the, the well, hold on. Let's, I want to be very clear about, about one thing, right? Um, cryptocurrency is one of the rarest places in the world right now where you can make generational wealth and life-altering money by purchasing things that are on a discount, Okay. And the nice thing is, the nice thing is, you know, you can do that. You can, you can do the thing. You can do exactly what you're saying with a good risk management system. And this is, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to put words into your mouth. So I just want to be very clear. This is what I'm advocating. Alexander may or may not co-sign co it. But what I've been telling people to do for the last six months and what I've been very clear and what my own portfolio looks like is I bought 20% of the Bitcoin that I wanted to hold just so I just bought 20% of Bitcoin that I want to hold. Keep in mind that for the portfolio that I want for 2023 and beyond for the next bull run, Bitcoin is only 30% of that portfolio, all right? So I bought 20%, 30%, that's a very small number that I allocated my cash holdings into cryptocurrency. You know, Alexander gave very, very sage advice. Uh, <laughs> Um, the last time we had an emergency meeting like this, March 2020, I remember very distinctly talking on the phone, like what do we, what do we talk to the members about? We tell them it's blood in the streets, it's time to buy. I remember that day very, very, I mean, who does remember that day? Like that was, uh, there was true panic in the air during that month. I'll never forget that. I mean, who, who, who among us, like that was right when the pandemic started, that was real panic. Yeah, that was real panic. Yeah. And you've got, you know, obviously I've seen a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, um, um, there's a lot of conspiracy running around today because obviously we've got, listen, I have heard everything today from what, uh, what, what mass dash just said a little while ago about the Dow hack, uh, or not the Dow hack. I'm so sorry about the, the situation with, uh, what's his name? Nikolai? Yeah, exactly. Um, I've, I've heard rumors about that. Obviously, the, the CZ Binance stuff, which I just covered ad nauseum earlier on the stream. We've got, you know, the the uh, the midterm election results that are coming in today. Uh, you know, so I've heard any number of conspiracy theories uh, across the wire today. But, um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what Moonshine Fuel said here is exactly what I was, what, what, what my point was. So layer in less risk, layer in less risk. Um, just a second. Uh, okay. 
Um, and that's exactly the right thing to do, right? You do not have to time the bottom, right? You have to identify assets that you fundamentally understand, that you fundamentally believe in, and that you think other individuals in the future will recognize exactly what you recognize now. So your goal, and this is what I've always said, so my, this is my little, it's my little pitch. The fun thing about being an investor is that you get to be a time traveler. You get to identify assets that are valuable now that you understand fundamentally will make the world a better place that you fundamentally believe in and you get to transport those assets from now into the future where you can give them back to those who don't believe you right now, All right? When the prices go up, others will come around and they'll be like, oh, you know, you were so smart. You know what I mean? This is, this is just a fun way to think about the markets because here's the reality of life. Nobody believes you when, when you're not on the top, right? If you're not the strongest, if you're not the smartest, if you're not successful, you know, then people in general don't care what you have to say. But if you're strong, smart, you're successful, people will grovel at your feet. Tell people, you can tell people the thing to do in these opportunities. People won't listen to you. In, in November, I thought the market had topped out. And I literally got like thrown out of chat rooms when I was like, guys, you know, I'm thinking like a $1,000 Ethereum. I don't know what the, the, the chart's just like. We broke the parabolic trend. You know, it's like sky is falling. And everybody's like, dude, we're in the middle of the bear mar bull market. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> You know, it's like people don't want to hear it. And, and and let me tell you, at a bottom, when people are hurting, when they've lost 90% of their money, you come up to them and tell them it's time to buy, they also really don't want to hear that right now. They're like, oh, great, thanks. Another person is going to lose me money by telling me to buy a, a dip, you know? People don't want to hear it because the, these moments of panic happen during moments of, like, extreme emotional it, – it's it's like extreme emotions. Like, they, they, they don't want to hear this, this – that – Everything you're thinking and feeling right now is wrong. That's when was the last time someone, you know, you were angry and someone told you to calm down and that helped, right? You know, people just don't want to hear it. It's the, these extreme emotional reactions. Yeah, yeah this is true. But it is $15,900 Bitcoin. And I think these are good buying prices. I said it. Everybody and their mom is going to get the bright idea to go and short Bitcoin tonight or tomorrow. I had, I had someone hit me up for advice on how he could 5x short Bitcoin yesterday. I'm telling you guys, like, if, if you think the shorts are going to dominate for very long, like, you know, I, I guess we could, like, depending on what, how things shake out with FTX, maybe we can get another week of this, but I, I don't expect that these prices will remain for very long. I think Justin was right in that, uh, well, we, we had formed something very close to a bottom, and obviously it wasn't the bottom or we wouldn't be below it, but uh, people were very happy with those prices. And I think people are going to be happy with lower prices too. People are going to step in and buy. Yeah. Well, I, be I believe that Bitcoin is fundamentally valuable. So from an investment standpoint, from an investment standpoint, I, I agree with you, right? You want to accumulate assets that are valuable in your portfolio when prices are going down. Um, eventually prices will go back up. So from, I, I will say, I agree with you from an investment perspective. Um, I would recommend that people be cautious from a trading perspective, especially if you're a trend following trader. Uh, typically, I recommend people in PTP not to trade areas of high volatility unless you have a system directly designed for high volatility. And just to give you an idea of what volatility looks like right now, uh, let's uh, let's put um, here we go. Let's see if we can. On the daily, yeah, on the daily, we're about maxed out on volatility. Uh, on the weekly, we've still got like historically low volatility. Uh, and you know, this um, this reminds me. So, in our previous analyst meeting, uh, we had um, uh, one of our analysts who really likes to trade volatility, saying that hey, monthly volatility. Weekly volatility, three-day volatility is at pretty much an all-time low. And when you know volatility is at a low, you can expect a very large move. And that large move is upon us, okay? Um, so yeah, I, I am hesitant to say, again, I see two scenarios. Um, 
If we do stop here, then I see a period of consolidation. Depending on what happens with KuCoin or how far the contagion spreads, again, just referring to my glass node charts because just having something to, to lay down to, uh, Bitcoin's delta price has caught the bottom wicks of markets before. And that was back in 2018 where we caught the absolute bottom of the bear market, the delta price. And that's currently pointing at 12,000. Uh, 843. In fact, I literally have that line on my chart. Uh, if I zoom out to the daily, you guys can see that I already put that line on the chart earlier in the stream. Uh, oh, I must have, yeah, sorry, I must have deleted it because I have a habit of right clicking and clicking remove all drawings. You know, um, um, someone, so I think it was uh, Mr. Ether who asked, but bottom feeder is firing off today. Um, if, if price closes around this price, well, it'll be firing off. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, hold on one sec. All right, guys. Well, we've had a heck of a stream today. I mean, we have laughed, we have cried. Um, we've, uh, we've watched the world collapse in front of us. All right. Um, uh, but, uh, all good things must come to an end guys. We've been running for almost two hours and we've just simply got to go. Um, Alexander, any, any final words of wisdom you'd like to share with everybody? Uh, I, I feel like I, I feel like I wise worded myself out at the beginning. You know, it's, it's not me. It's the greats who say it. You know, when there's panic, you want to be on the other side of that trade. People are making emotional decisions. What they're doing is not based, in, a lot of it is not based in logic. Therefore, when you're on the other side of the trade, you benefit from their emotional decision. That's, that's the way you should see it. Like you, when there's panic, you want to be on the other side of it because people are not making a rational decision in their buying and selling process. All right, huh? Alexander Pearson, thank you so much for joining me on stream. Everybody give a warm applause to our senior analyst, Alexander Pearson. You can check out his uh, ideas uh, in our Discord and communicate with him more there as well. Link in the description. All right, Alex, thank you very much, man. Redco is saying, uh, just catch the knife. I'm not saying just catch the knife, but be on the lookout, guys, okay? Like, you know, don't, don't, get, don't get so down on the markets that you don't see an opportunity that may present itself, okay? That, that's all I'll say. I'm not telling everybody to go out and buy right this second. All right. Yeah, just keep your eyes open. Understand that long-term, big picture, okay, long-term, big picture, uh, Bitcoin's prices are at, like, record lows. So does that mean the market can't keep going down? No. Does, the market, does that mean the market's going to go down a lot more? We're not saying that it won't. What we are saying is that long term, you have the patience and the discipline and the courage to buy or dollar cost average an asset that everyone else is afraid to buy that you understand is fundamentally valuable. and You hold on to it long enough. Historically, you will be rewarded. And at these prices, probably rewarded quite a bit. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much, brother. I'm going to do a wrap up. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. All right. Good times. All right. So let's, uh, let's cut here. All right. I want to thank everybody for joining me for today's live stream. Thank you so much. We had a ton of engagement today. We had over a hundred people in here at the peak and a steady 50 people for the entire two hours that we've been live. And we don't go that live that often anymore. And I know you guys are probably unhappy about that, but happy to say we've got a lot of awesome things coming up in the future. So if you enjoy this content, if you want to learn more about how to build trading strategies, if you want to learn more about how to conquer the cryptocurrency markets, how you can be less afraid when situations like this happen and more prepared, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the thumbs up button. That helps us get the word out. It helps us incentivize people. If you guys are interested in building your own trading strategy, if you're tired of trading the same old way, chasing the hype, chasing the pump, chasing the dump, 
and check out everything that we do at crackingcryptocurrency.com. Link is in the description down below. Again, you want to subscribe to the channel because we've got some fantastic material coming out in the future. Airdrop guides, ideas on strategies, ideas on risk, full walkthroughs. You guys don't want to miss it. Highly recommend it. Join the community too. Discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com. You need individuals to push you, to challenge you, and to hold you accountable to your trading decisions in this industry more than anybody else. Be happy to chat with you guys in there. And that's where the conversation keeps going long after the show is over. So looking forward to seeing you there. Shout outs to everybody. Mass Dash, Aaron Webb, Caprica, Moonshine Fuel, R Legato, B Flow as always, and everybody else that I didn't mention. Thank you, Tom Hardy. Thank you guys so much for coming by tonight, giving your support. Hold on to your hats. Long-term investors, this uh, the Bitcoin dream isn't over. Just a dip, just a bear market. We've been through these before. For the traders out there, be cautious. Hold your chips close to your vest. Play your cards right and enter strategically. All right, more updates on this soon. And we'll see you guys very, very soon for the next one. Cheers. Thank you.